Hey everybody, it is deep in the heart of summer, deep in the heart of Texas here. As much as I'd love to be inside watching YouTube videos with all of you, I had to come out here and enjoy this beautiful day. So while we're here, why don't we check out some summer science? You can start with all this sweat. Sweat glands come in primarily two forms, eccrine and apocrine. Now, apocrine glands are found in places like your armpits and, um, well, places that contribute to body odor. Eccrine glands are distributed throughout your whole body, and those are the ones that do all the cooling and the shirt soaking. You've got between one and a half and four million eccrine sweat glands distributed throughout your skin. Now, when your body's thermostat, which is in the hypothalamus region of your brain, detects a rise in body temperature or emotional changes or stress, special nerve impulses turn on your dermal waterworks. Sweat glands work a lot like a well. Cells at the bottom release little packets of water, salt, and other molecules into the duct, and it rises to the surface where the cooling happens. Inside of a liquid, molecules are shaking around. Some are a bit faster than others. Every so often, one of them breaks free of the attractive forces of its neighbors and flies off into the vapor phase. Now, over time, the molecules that are left in the liquid phase are jittering less on average, and the liquid is cooler than it was before. That cools the blood near the surface, so it flows back to your core and cools you off as a whole, which might actually work if you live somewhere less humid than Austin. Our bodies can create up to three liters of sweat per hour, and I feel like I might be getting there. I need another way to cool off. Now that I'm chilling out in this 70 degree spring fed water, something else pretty cool has happened. My fingers are getting all pruney. The scientists used to think this is because our fingers and our skin were actually soaking up water, but it turns out it's an active process. If you sever the nerve to your hand, no more pruney fingers. So there must be a good reason for it, right? Well, last year, neuroscientists tested people's grip. People with pruny fingers versus people with dry fingers in wet conditions. And it turns out the people with pruny fingers had better grip, just like the treads of a tire on a wet road. As you can tell, I tan extensively, uh, but I probably had enough sun today. Let's get it. A sunburn is most definitely an actual burn, only instead of fire, it comes from radiation. Our atmosphere and ozone layer absorb different wavelengths of UV light to varying degrees, but a good amount still makes it down to Earth. When those UV rays hit your skin cells, they can damage nucleic acids, either killing the cells or engaging an immune system emergency response. It's a lot like if you cut yourself. To repair the damage, cells release inflammatory chemicals that make your skin painful to touch, and your skin turns red thanks to swollen capillaries that are delivering white blood cells to the damaged area. Those damaged cells might die and peel away, or they might respond by producing melanin, which is a natural skin protectant. But even with a tan, and whether they come from the sun or a tanning bed, UV rays can fry your DNA into these thymine dimers, which, when they're repaired by your cells, introduce genetic mutations that can cause cancer. You ever wonder what those SPF numbers actually mean? Well, sun protection factor measures how much of the UVB rays the chemicals in these sunscreens happen to block. Unfortunately, that scale tops out around 50, so don't be fooled into paying more for higher numbers. Unfortunately, there's no precise measure of protection for UVA, which is the other UV component in sunlight. Bill McElligott drove a truck for 28 years. This incredible photo shows how those UVA rays beaming through his driver's side window can age skin. When you're done watching YouTube for the day, grab yourself a sweet treat, head outside, and try to find some summer science of your own. Stay curious, and don't forget your cow. The Game of Thrones universe is one of the most brilliantly complex and utterly frustrating fictional universes ever created. But it is a fictional universe, and the only rule of a fictional universe is that it is self-consistent. It doesn't have to agree with our science, or our logic, 